Hi, it's Pat here from Letters to My Sister. This is just a quick video to show you um, a lovely box of goodies that we're putting together for sale in our shop. So I'm going to go through what's in the box. So this is um, the packing box you'll receive. It's about, actually, there we go, 22 by 16 by 8 centimetres. That will be sent in a satchel. And inside is a slow stitching treasure trove. So we'll start off, there's a lovely big piece of quilted fabric, makes a great journal cover. So it's just the right size. And then there's also some broderie on glaze fabric, which will make a great lining. This is actually folded, so there's oodles there. Um, let's see, I've got a nice piece of trimming that matches this to make a pocket along the bottom of your journal. Now just make sure that we're in focus. There we go. So that's that's how I do journal covers. Usually I put a piece of something along the bottom. Um, okay, get that out the way. Then there's all sorts of bits and pieces. Here's some of our um, fabric ribbon that's stamped. I've used these as belly bands in journals, but they also have been very popular in slow stitching kits using bits and also for snippet rolls which brings me on to something else Dale and I have both been making snippet rolls that are just plain and using up some of the leftover linens that we come across um, some of the linens on these are just the quality is incredible there's also cottons some of them are leftover pieces from tablecloths that had stains or holes but we've cut out the good pieces and then you can put on la more laces, you're embroidering little snippets of this and that. And we're selling these as one meter pieces. But in this kit, I've put them on a lovely antique or certainly vintage um, pianola roll. It's been cut down in size. It's got Bakelite ends. Some of them have uh, sort of brass ends, but they, they look really nice and they are really old, 1940s mainly. So there's that piece that's got about a meter on it. Then there's a few doilies that you can either cut up or, um, well, you could use them as doilies, um, but you can cut them up and use them in your quilts. Uh, well, yeah, quilts, but in your journals and in your slow stitching. So there's, uh, this is Battenberg lace. I have a gorgeous little pink crocheted heart and then something with some embroidery on it now some of these do have marks on because they are vintage or some are antique um, no two kits will be the same because well i only have one of each of many of these um, but in slow stitching you either cut around the shapes or embroider over the top it's just a shame to see something we like to bring give things a new lease of life by using them even if they have a stain Okay, we've got um, some yo-yos or Suffolk puffs, which are vintage also, or made from vintage fabrics. This is a lovely piece of linen. It was made into a, a serviette, but never used. Um, it is vintage, it's pretty old, but it's a nice piece for either cutting up or embroidering directly onto. And there's more. Okay, laces, there's a lot of different laces this like that's a nylon one some of them i've put on lovely dolly pegs which is a nice way for you to store them so we've got some dolly pegs here with a crocheted lace and an embroidered organza also uh honey dipping sticks there's some lovely wooden honey dipping sticks and another one with just some lace trim on it we are selling separately in our shop some beautiful bobbins um which our brother makes I'll just show you while you're here this is um these are turned on the wood lathe and each one's made by hand um these ones have a little bee finial but they're also gorgeous for storing your snippet rolls on or your laces anything like that anyway that's a separate separate thing now I've got on here a little charm with a few different laces and a cupure lace motif 
these I've had for years so they'd all be vintage and this one is antique it came off a very old um, tablecloth on the corners but the tablecloth was um, had seen better days and even this has got some flaws in it but well I guess that just shows how old it is a few more bits and pieces some sort of little ribbon or organza ribbon roses very three-dimensional some more colored lace another I think this would be called pure lace too it's real pretty that one um, tiny padded hearts some crocheted medallions buttons so on on a antique reproduction card um, this one I think this is tattered as in t-a-t-t-e-d -T lace although I'm not 100% sure I got a new lace book I really must look it up to find out for sure this is a Nottingham lace uh, a piece of calico which is always useful for lining embroidering on you can't there, there are a million one uses for a piece of calico Here's some embroidery floss, which is on, this is a reproduction uh, spool, but they're made to look vintage and they look really cute. If you like me, I like to have my sewing room look as cute as it is useful. Some embroidery thread, um, oh actually it's crochet cotton and this came from, if you saw our last video, I got a box full of vintage crochet spools so I thought well I'll share those and a nice piece of felt for making needle books some pearl buttons oh, pearl buttons, sorry pearls on a string these are at least 40 years old because they're from when I had my bridal shop in the 1980s we have here a reproduction needle pack but it does have a needle in it so if you don't have a needle you've got something to start and last but not least a thimble, a little porcelain thindle, thimble, which also is, oh, sorry, we're not in focus there. Um, and that's a vintage one, so it's certainly more than 20 years old. Anyway, that's that. There's over 40 items in here, and um, it's a great starter kit and would make a great gift for someone you know who wants to get into slow stitch. So thanks for watching. Bye.